here is a video I've been waiting to make for a very long time. So let's get started. So like I was saying, I've been waiting to record this video for a very long time. I watch a lot of YouTube videos out there of people and how they weed whack, or some people call this the weed eater. I call it the weed whacker. But I've been watching a lot of videos out there and it drives me nuts sometimes how some people weed whack. So just a little bit of background. I don't want to come off like I don't know what I'm talking about. I, me, growing up, my dad had a lawn business. I've been working with him since I was 13 years old, all the way through I graduated college. So I've cut a lot of lawns in my day. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to weed whacking. Uh, this right here is just an Echo. Uh, it's a commercial weed whacker right here. The model is a SRM 261. I've been using this for years. This thing's probably over 10 years old. Um, it's just your traditional bump line right here. You bump it down to feed your line. You take it off, you feed your line back in when it empties out. This thing runs really good. Uh, I just keep it tuned up every year and it's been running solid. So today I just wanna go over some tips on how people can improve themselves on weed whacking and how to always walk forward and not backward when you weed whack. So when it comes to weed whacking, first thing you wanna do is make sure you hold the weed whacker the right way. I have my hand here on the throttle for my trigger. I have my right hand here on the handle. Now don't get me wrong, some people may hold it the opposite way like this. I hold it this way. This is how I've always held it. Uh, you can hold it any way you want. It's the same concept on both sides. So first, this the Wee Whack, just plain straight. Obviously, you're just going to hold it down level enough. You don't want to scalp the grass. Obviously, you want to keep it on a level surface so you're not scalping any kind of grass. But the most important thing that I wanted to talk about today was edging. Edging is very important, especially for your sidewalks, your your uh, flower beds, things of that nature. And uh, this is where I see most people do it the wrong way and how they can improve it at home. So for edging, very simple concept. As long as you have a pretty good edge already started, and I'll leave a link to a video that the Lone Whisperer did down in the video description below. He talked about how to uh, form an edge if you don't have an edge already. Um, there's a lot of great uh, tools that you can use if you have a stick edger at home, that's great. You could always rent an edger at Home Depot. Uh, they're very inexpensive. But if you have an edge that's very overgrown, then I suggest you go out there and get something like that. Now, when I say an edge that's overgrown, what I mean is if you can't see the, the, the point of where your grass is and your uh, sidewalk is or your driveway, whatever, that's where it's overgrown. So, so typical people, if they've never edged before in their life, their sidewalk, their driveway or anything, it could be overgrown as much as a couple inches over into this part of, of the sidewalk or the driveway or whatever. And when, in that instance, what I suggest you do, like I talked about earlier, either rent an edger. They're very inexpensive from Home Depot. You can definitely rent those. If you have a stick edger, uh, what I mean by stick edger is instead of having your Wee Whacker end, they have a actual stick edger on them. Uh, they're interchangeable. This obviously, this Wee Whacker here is not interchangeable. Um, which is fine for me, for my purposes. But if you have one of those stick edger attachments, it's really great. You can just go along the edge here and then you can take either a spade or a flat shovel and then just scoop away the overgrown edge. And then from here, once you do get an edge down pretty well, all you really need, in my opinion, is just a regular Wee Whacker just like this. So when you go to edge a sidewalk with your Wee Whacker, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is hold your hand just like your typical locations, your one hand on the handle, your one hand on the throttle, and then all you have to do is just flip over the Wee Whacker. Then all you have to do is move your hand right here, you have your elbow up like this, and then you can have your Wee Whacker at a nice angle right here to edge. So when you go to edge your sidewalk, it's very simple to do. All you have to do is just a matter of flipping your Wee Whacker over. So right here, I have my hand on the throttle right here, I have my hand on the, on the handle right here, and then all I'm gonna do is go from my normal Wee Whacker position here, and I'm just gonna flip it over, I have my elbow up, I have my hand on the handle right here, I just moved it down, and then from here, all I have to do is just glide the Wee Whacker right down the edge of the sidewalk right here, and I can easily cut my edge. And then when you get done, when you get down to a certain point, all you have to do, flip it back over, and then you just keep going along the straight side. Very simple to do, anybody can do this, it just, just takes practice. I've done it over time, obviously I've done it for many years, so now I'm very good at it. 
but it's just that simple. All you gotta do is take your weed whacker, flip it over, put it down on your edge, and obviously you don't want the head all the way down into the sidewalk. You want it up a little bit, it, that way. If it's all the way down, it's not gonna spin very good. Remember, you do have a weed whacker cord on here. So just think about it. If it's all the way down the ground, this cord is not fully going around the right way. So what you wanna do is, is obviously, you wanna hold it up a little bit in the air so that cord has enough uh, force to go around the right way so that cord length is long enough where it's not digging into the dirt you just want it up a little bit off of the ground and just go a longer way one of the things that drives me the most nuts is the way people walk and what I was taught was to always walk forward. And what I mean by that is start off, start off at a certain point and just keep going a certain way, like keep going walking forward so you're not going backward and then forward. And let me show you what I mean by that because I know that probably sounds a little confusing. So what I'm gonna show you is, what I typically always do is I start with the outside curb. I'll do the outside curb, whack any, any weeds that are growing out into the street area. And then from there, I will edge along the curb line then I'll do the sidewalk, come down, edge off this little part right here. And then from there, I'll edge that sidewalk down to that end of my perimeter where my house is. Then I'll go up there to where the fence line is, we whack straight along and then come down this way. That way I'm not walking backwards and I'm not going to certain points. I'm always walking in a certain pace to walk forward. I'm not walking backward. So you see how I was always walking forward there. I was never walking backwards. And what I mean by walking backwards is, and the reason why I like holding it the way I'm holding is, I don't know how many times I see people do it this way, but it drives me absolutely nuts. Is I don't understand why, and please comment below if you like doing it this way and tell me the reason why, but why do people walk backwards when they wee whack their edge? And this is what I mean by walking backwards. Well, I don't I don't I don't get the walking backwards thing like this just doesn't make any sense to me our our motion and the way we walk we want to obviously walk forward I mean I, I for me stability wise I just feel like you bet you would be more stable walking forward as opposed to backward and imagine walking backwards your whole property imagine if I walk backwards doing this whole area and what I mean is is Instead of me walking forward, if I had to do this the whole time and try to angle up this angle the whole time, in my opinion, it makes no sense. So if you can, try start walking forward. Um, obviously, some parts, you know, where you edge, obviously, like uh, flower beds and the way the, 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 the reel here is spinning, obviously, it can kick up into a flower bed or the way, you know, the way you're walking. But in my opinion, what's the point of walking backwards? Try walking forward, people. I mean, it just drives me absolutely nuts. Um, I've always walked forward and I've caught, cut, like I said, many lawns in my day. And at the end of the day, I've never tripped. I've never fell on my ass. I've always walked forward and I've never had a problem. So I'm gonna show you another example of how I always walk forward and I'm never walking backward when I go to edge my lawn. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna start out on the curb line down here, edge down, come up the curb, go down the sidewalk, come up the sidewalk, go down my driveway here, and then come around my flower bed and then stop. And you'll see I'm always walking forward. I'm never walking backwards. So let me show you.
just got done doing this side of my house and as you can see from the footage I was constantly walking forward I wasn't walking backward there was only one spot that I did walk backward um, there's a one spot where the edge needed to be defined a little bit more so obviously I just had my my trimmer over just like this and I just walked back just a little bit and I just defined that edge by moving my hands back and forth with the wee whacker that way the edge is nice and defined so next time I go around, the next time I cut my lawn, I usually only edge, by the way, only once a week, but I usually mow twice a week. So usually I'll edge and uh, blow on the weekends. So next time I go to edge and do my uh, lawn and edge it and blow it, that way that the line is more defined. So if you do find spots where you're going along and that edge needs to be redefined, don't be afraid to have your wee whacker there and just move it back and forth a couple times just so you can define that edge a little bit more so once you get edging down and believe me it's going to take time it's going to take practice but once you keep doing edging over and over again and I do recommend you do it as much as you can try and do it at least once a week um, and once you do get it down you're gonna have a nice defined edge like you see here between your sidewalk and your grass you just want a little bit of a space between there uh, not much and you can easily do it with the wee whacker like I showed you here today you don't need an edger you don't need a stick edger once you get your edge defined with either a stick edger or a regular edger, all you're gonna need is one of these weed whackers. And what's really great about using a weed whacker is you can obviously use a weed whacker to go around your mailboxes, your fence lines, things like that. And then all you have to do is just flip over your weed whacker and you can use it as an edger. And like I showed you here, you have a nice defined edge between your sidewalk and your grass. And like I said, you could do a sidewalk, you could do a, a, a driveway, you could do a patio, you could do anything like that. And you can even do a flower bed like I showed you earlier on my front. I edge my flower bed to, to create a nice live edge between my grass and my flower bed. Um, so please take what I do and what I showed you today as a recommendation. Um, these are really great tips for your average homeowner. Um, if you wanna save money and you don't wanna buy a stick edger or one of those ones that has the attachment between your regular wee whacker head and your edger, by all means, you can obviously, like I showed you here today, you can just use a regular weed whacker or weed eater, however you say, I call it a weed whacker. You could just use a regular weed whacker like I showed you here today to edge your lawn. So that's pretty much it you guys for today. I just wanted to show you what drives me the most nuts out of any video I watch on YouTube. Um, like I said, I have a ton of experience when it comes to weed whacking. Um, seriously guys, I have been using a weed whacker and a blower since I've been 13. Um, all the way through college and until I graduated college. So I have cut many lawns in my day, so I do know what I'm talking about. Um, I know the benefits of walking forward on doing uh, multiple lawns in one day as opposed to walking backwards. It will save your back, it will save, your, save you time. Um, so please take what I showed you today, try to use it in your own lawn and at home, believe me, it will help you. It will make you a better wee whacker and a better edger in the long run. And before I go today, guys, I just wanna show you a quick update of the Mountain View seed that I threw down right here behind me. It's been almost exactly a month since I threw it down over Labor Day weekend. And as you can see, I mean, it's looking really great. It's coming great. Um, I am changing up my spoon feeding program. Um, I had to do a little nicks in it and um, I'm gonna change it up, but that's for another video. So. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. And like always guys, if you found today's content helpful or if you enjoy today's content, make sure you smash that like button. It helps out with the channel. It helps out with people finding the videos in my channel. So again, smash that like button if you enjoy today's content. And like always guys, I'll see you in the next one. If you're interested in the five steps that I did for my fall overseed, check out the video right here in the end screen. And if you're interested in the day four germination that I saw in the seed right here behind me, the Mountain View seed, check out the other video in the end screen. And like always, hit that subscribe button right there in the middle if you're new. And I'll see you in the next one.